but it is through chemistry and elements that we, we get to understand natural phenomena, we get to understand how our body works, how nature works, and you know, how we can clean up the mess we're creating. Hello, thank you so much for checking out Earth Care. I'm Sarah Christie. Today we're heading to Waterloo, Ontario to Wilfrid Laurier University to meet Dr. Hind Alabadle, who is a research professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Now, throughout our conversations on Earth Care, we have learned that there are a ton of contributors when it comes to climate change, right? Well, aerosols. There's one we haven't dug into yet. What are they? How are we as humans contributing? And what role do aerosols play in contributing to climate change? Now, if you're anything like me, talking about chemistry might be extremely intimidating. Dr. Hind Alabadle to the rescue. She has received multiple awards and recognitions for her contribution to science. For instance, the Women Who Inspire Award from the Kitchener-Waterloo Coalition of Muslim Women. To say that list is impressive is actually an understatement. Needless to say, we are going to learn some things today about aerosols. Dr. Hind Alabadle, thank you so much for being on Earthcare. I'm so thrilled to have you as a guest because first of all, heck yeah, women leading in STEM. But also this is a completely new topic to me. When I started reading about your research and your department, you know, I would hear aerosols and I think just kind of think about hairspray. And I knew that they were bad, but mostly because I associated them with hairspray. So there's a whole world to them. So why don't we just start with what is an aerosol? Yes, so thank you very much for hosting me to be on your show. Keep up the great work that you are doing, informing the public about important environmental issues that uh, we care about and we are, that are important for our survival. So an aerosol is a stable suspension of solid particles or liquid droplets that can stay in the atmosphere for up to two weeks and they can travel thousands of miles and they have natural and uh, human related sources. I think we heard of the word a lot over the past couple of years, especially because of the pandemic, but what role do aerosols then play in contributing to climate change? Yes, this is an important question. Well, the science that we have today tell us that aerosols effect on the climate can be second to that of CO2, depending on the chemicals that are in these aerosols. In general, if you wanna think about aerosols role in climate change, you wanna um, think of the fact that aerosols play a role in changing the energy balance of the atmosphere, which could lead um, to heating or cooling. Now, how do they do that? Well, they do it in a number of ways. The first one is that aerosols have the ability to absorb or scatter incoming solar radiation. That's why we, um, on hazy days, we see reduced visibility. Uh, they also affect the cloud formation and lifetime. Um, and depending on how high the clouds are, the clouds could cause cooling or um, heating effect. Another important role for aerosols is that they provide surfaces for chemical reactions to take place in the atmosphere, and that changes their properties that play a role in their climate effect. Eventually, aerosols get deposited on, um, on, on the oceans, on land, on lakes, and we have some studies that show that aerosols, aerosol deposition could also affect the reflectivity of snow and ice surfaces to some degree. Um, and they also cause a change in the ocean biogeochemistry because of their content of nutrients. So basically, the weather we feel is being influenced and impacted by the aerosols that are surrounding us? Yeah, in a, in a complex way, yes. That's oh, what. interesting. Now, would, would there be anything that would happen that would make them move faster or slower as they are floating along? Well, it, it size. Size is an important um, parameter that depends what we call the settling velocity and mobility of aerosols when they are suspended in air. Okay. So what would cause what would cause human caused atmospheric aerosols? What well, what are we doing to contribute basically as humans? Yeah, human activities in general that involve the burning of um fossil fuels, increase the amount of what we call biomass burning aerosols in the atmosphere. The other side of burning stuff is, is the amount of gases 
that we all that get emitted and these gases have been found to actually react in the atmosphere to form particles gotcha so can they be removed you know if we're doing these this damage as humans is there a way to combat that yes there is and um we can stop burning stuff you know we can stop burning wood that is used in camp or bonfires we can stop um, burning gasoline and diesel and cars and trucks um, and also also stop burning natural gas for heating and cooling buildings we need also to have um in place strict environmental laws and regulations on industrial emissions to filter out particles and also to remove gases that could react in the atmosphere to form particles. We, we also need to actually reduce the number of vehicles on the roads in order, and maximize options for active modes of transportation in order to minimize road dust. Interesting. So as someone who is dedicating, I, my I imagine all of your time to learning about this and finding ways to uh, be active. Where do you find hope when you're looking into our future in terms of climate change? Well, I, I find hope in the fact that we have science and technology and people interested in building a new future that is sustainable and more in harmony with nature. You know, we are equipped with a lot to make sure that we are learning from the past and we do not repeat the mistakes uh, from the past and we elect you know we elect officials that can support the aspirations of new and of younger generations to build a new future that is more sustainable um you know an environment that can sustain life on earth instead of destroys life on earth um, for me, it is, uh, you know, studying the work, talking about it, publishing the latest um, data that we get from lab measurements, communicate with other scientists who do field work or modeling work. All of that is, is, an, eff is an effort to educate ourselves and to also tell us that we still have the power to, um, uh, you know, to build something that uh, previous generations perhaps didn't get the chance to build, right? So that, that's what gives me momentum and gives me hope is that, you know, we, I'm, I'm working with people who, who care about these issues and wanna do something um, about them. And, and that's what gives me hope. What do you want people to know about the study of atmospheric aerosols and its importance? Yes, this is a very nice question that ties with the first one you asked me, uh, because we know that aerosols affect the, the climate um, and studying atmospheric aerosols is exciting and, um, and the science continues to evolve um, as we speak. Um, we, you know, it's important for those who are interested in, in, uh, in, this, in this field of science to know that when we study the properties of aerosols, you know, how their size change, how their chemical composition change, we can innovate and build new tools that will help us measure them um, in real time. On the, we also know that on the short term, inhaling particulate matter affects human health and the overall health of the ecosystem. That's why particulate matter is considered an indicator for air pollution. And because um, societies in this day and age are you know, taking steps to lower their carbon dioxide emissions, we should not forget about atmospheric aerosols and we need to continue monitoring them and see how their amounts and properties are changing with the new policies we're creating. To give you news, I will have a book on atmospheric aerosol chemistry published in May this year, and this is directed to early career researchers who are entering the field, who want to know more about it at a, at a, a chemical depth, uh, because I summarize in it the state of the science in that field. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> are you allowed to share what the book title is? It's Atmospheric Aerosol Chemistry. The okay. State <laughs> you know, that's actually, I, I think this is just so cool because going to your website is just such an entirely different world for myself personally, but it's just so neat. And, and as you get to reading about it, you realize the weight of, um, and the importance of what you're studying. So for anybody listening or watching this going, wow, this is cool. How do I get into this? What did you start studying that kind of paved your way into this field? 
Right. This, yeah, this is an important question. Um, so as an undergrad, well, actually started in high school. In high school, we learned about the impact of uh, greenhouse gases on the climate, right? And we knew how, uh, uh, how the, you know, the greenhouse effect is going to cause disturbances to natural phenomena. Um, and in university, um, I got to study about how chemistry can be used to uh, clean up polluted environments. And I, I thought that was really cool. And you, you know, a, a, di a positive dimension of being a chemist is that chemistry can help us solve problems, not only create problems through emissions of harmful chemicals. And, uh, and it is actually, uh, it was during my undergrad studies that I decided that I'd like to pursue graduate work related to the atmospheric chemistry field because I wanted to know more about the chemistry of natural systems. You know, how, how does you know how does chemistry help us understand what happens around us? And the atmosphere was you know seemed to be such a a cool um, chemical reactor that I really wanted to know more about. The world chemical in and of itself is not bad or good. It is. Um, the effect of the chemical that is that we have to judge as bad or good upon exposure to which, uh, right? right? So we have to make that distinction. But it is through chemistry and elements that we we get to understand natural phenomena. We get to understand how our body works, how nature works, and you know how we can clean up the mess we're creating. <laughs> Turning lemons into lemonade, essentially. All right, all right. That is so great. Thank you so much for your time and educating us on a topic that I think I'm not alone in saying not a lot of us know the impact of atmospheres, atmospheric aerosols. So this was such a cool conversation. I appreciate your time and congratulations again on your book. Thank you. Appreciate the interview. And I, you know, I welcome comments uh, from or questions from your viewers. So keep up the good work that you're doing. And, and uh, hopefully your viewers will find this episode uh, useful and helpful.